People ask me sometimes what I do for a living, and the short answer is that I still have absolutely no idea. I guess the, the slightly longer answer is that I am a theater artist. I'm the founding artistic director of Drama by George, which is a theater company that I started, and we do educational theater. So we have after-school drama clubs, and we do workshops in schools, and we do performances for schools, and for pretty much anything that has to do with, like, kids and teenagers and theater, we do it. Summer camps, we, we make short films with our students, okay? So that's, that, that's kind of what we do. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about what you might want to do if you're thinking about becoming a theater artist, and maybe you don't want to, like, move to New York or L.A. and, and try to, you know, make the big time. Maybe you sort of like Louisville or a city like it. Um, now, I understand that, you know, some people do want to try and move to New York or L.A., but you need to understand that for most people, that life is not sustainable. Because eventually you're going to decide that you want to have kids, or you want to actually do things like normal things like own a house, or you actually want to, like, you know, drive a car, which is kind of hard to do in New York, and because everything costs so much and because the streets are so congested. And, and you may end up back in a city like Louisville, even if you start off in, in New York or L.A. Um, I, I, know, I know you may be thinking that you're going to go out and be the next Jennifer Lawrence, but trust me, there are very, very few Jennifer Lawrences. Um, yes, Jennifer Lawrence is a hard-working actress from Louisville who also happens to be a very attractive person and who has a ton of talent. But you know what? There are tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people out there all over the country, particularly in New York, New York and L.A., who have tons of talent and are hard workers and are really good-looking people. And most of them are not Jennifer Lawrence. She got really, 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 really lucky. So, if you're considering a career in theater, okay, and you are like, man, I'm going to move to New York and I'm going to make it. Well, good for you. I hope you do. But you also need to realize that you might want to have a plan B. Not a backup plan like, oh, well, if theater doesn't work out, then I'm going to go be a waiter, okay? But a plan B where your dream can look a little bit different than you thought. Now, let me give you my top five pieces of advice if you want to become a working theater artist, as in someone who actually pays at least some of their bills doing performing. Number one... Don't do it. All right? I have a couple of, of friends from, from way back, all right? People who I've known for a long time. Um, both of them have more talent in their pinky finger than I have in my entire body. Incredibly, incredibly talented actors. One of them does work as an actor sometimes. The rest of the time, she cleans houses to make ends meet. The other one decided that she just didn't want to pay the price of working in theater, and she's a buyer for a department store. Now, they have a ton of talent. They're hardworking people. They're good-looking people. You would think they've got everything going for them. But they decided that theater just wasn't worth it. I can tell you from my experience, there have been months where I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. Sometimes when people find out that I own my own business, they're like, Oh, George, do, do you... Do, are you, like, rich? And I have to, like, restrain myself from not laughing in their face. Because, no, I am the furthest thing from rich. When you're trying to have a creative career, even if you do it by owning your own business, you are never, ever going to get rich, so don't even think about it. The fact is that teachers, and you've probably heard, you know, that teachers don't make a whole ton of money, right? Okay? The fact is that there are teachers working in the Louisville School District who make more than double what I do. There are teachers in the Louisville School District who make triple what I do. All right? You are not going to get rich in a career in theater. You're going to make a lot of sacrifices. You're going to worry about money. You're going to worry about getting gigs. You're going to worry about whether you'll ever do anything creative ever again. And that might or might not be worth the cost. But the first advice I would give you if you're thinking about a creative career is don't do it. If you can be happy doing something else, you know, I don't know, um, slinging hamburgers, probably not, but, you know, maybe maybe it is being a teacher. Maybe it's um, being a, a, I don't know, a pirate, whatever, okay? If you have other career options open to you, things that you're good at and that you enjoy, 
do them instead of theater. Your life will be a lot easier. All right, if you're still with me, if I haven't talked you out of it, let me give you my second piece of advice. Number two, if you're bound and determined to make a career in performing, then you need to do theater. You need to do all the theater that you can. It doesn't need to be all like classy theater with fancy lights and scenery and all that stuff, okay? Some of the most valuable experiences that I had growing up in theater were actually producing plays for my church youth group because I found out really fast what the difference between funny and boring was and what the difference between thought-provoking and stupid was, all right? Um, so you don't have to do fancy theater, but you need to be doing theater. If you think that somehow magically you're going to become a star when you haven't been doing anything of the performing sort, you are going to be a sad, sad person when you find out that life doesn't work that way. Get out there and do some theater. Now, third piece of advice. If you are planning to become an artist, whether you're going to move to L.A., whether you're going to stay in Louisville, Whatever you're going to do, if you want to make all or part of your living by doing performing, you need to be an entrepreneur. You say, I've heard that word, but I don't know what it means. What's an entrepreneur? Basically, that's someone who makes up their own job. That's someone who doesn't go to work from 8 o'clock to 4.30 every day and punch a time clock and, you know, do whatever their boss tells them to do, and then they walk home with a paycheck every two weeks. An entrepreneur is someone who runs their own business. Now, not everyone starts a theater company like I have. But even if you're a freelance actor, you still have to think like a business person. You have to be thinking, huh, I'm going to three auditions this week. I probably won't land any of those gigs. I haven't landed any gigs for a while. And by the way, that's pretty common for actors, even experienced actors. What else am I going to do so that I can have the luxury of eating next month? So as an entrepreneur, you need to be starting to think like a business person. You need to be thinking, hey, I don't have a boss who's going to tell me exactly what to do and is going to pay me for it. I have to make it up as I go along. And the best way to practice that is by doing entrepreneurial things now. In other words, right now, start working on your own projects. Not things your teacher tells you to, tells you to do even if it's your theater teacher, but things that you choose to do. You know, get some friends together and produce a play in your basement. Even, even if you never perform it, you'll have the practice of getting people together for a rehearsal and seeing what it takes. Um, get, um, get a camera out and make yourself a short film. Um, get, uh, get a pencil and paper out and write a script. And, and, you know, it doesn't have to be a great script. Just, just see if you can discipline yourself to finish one. Um, go out there and start auditioning for things. Say, hey, Mom, you know, I heard there's these auditions coming up at Derby Dinner Theater. Can you take me there and see if I can get a part? And it doesn't really even matter if you get a part. What matters is you've had the experience of auditioning because that's the beginning of being an entrepreneur. It's the beginning of making your own job. Piece of advice number four. Decide in advance why you are doing this. And here's a tip. Doing it, in other words, doing a performing career so that you can get famous is a really, really horrible reason to do it. Now, don't get me wrong. I love applause. I like being in front of a camera, as you may be able to tell right now. I like getting up on a stage. I like talking to bunches of people. The bigger the audience is, the happier I am. There's nothing wrong with liking to be in the spotlight. But if you have decided on a performing career because you want to get famous, there are two problems with that. One is, the odds are very, very much against you ever actually being famous. And two, it's a really lousy reason when you start to think about the meaning of life, what you want your life to mean, what you want to accomplish, how you want people to remember you. You don't want them to think, hey, that George guy, you know what? He was a lousy friend, but he was famous. And really, is, is that what you want people to think about you? No, you need a better reason for performing. Um, maybe it's that you love this, that there is nothing you love more in this life than performing. I will tell you, the biggest natural high in the world for me is getting on stage or in front of a camera and talking to an audience. 
Now that's kind of weird. That's actually really weird. Most people don't work that way. Most people are afraid of audiences. But for me, it's the biggest natural high in the world. And that's a big part of the reason why I'm a performer for a living. Because I love it so much. That's why, big part of the reason why, it's worth putting up with so many other, so much of the stuff, so much of the bad stuff that comes with trying to be an entrepreneur and a performer. But, I also have other reasons why I do this. One of them, and the most important one in fact, is that I want to try to change people's hearts with things that matter. So, I go out and I do plays for elementary students that are about equipping them to make positive choices even in the face of peer pressure. I go in and I talk to teenagers about bullying because I was bullied as a kid and so bullying is a subject that is very important to me in terms of helping it stop happening. All of those things are far, far more important to me than ever being famous. All right, last piece of advice. Piece of advice number five if you're thinking about being a performing artist for a living. Find a side hustle. Now, this is different from when your mom says, Honey, you need to have a backup plan. Why don't you get a nice teaching degree in case the acting thing doesn't work out? Okay? There's a difference between a side hustle and a backup plan. A backup plan says, you know what, I'm probably not going to make theater work anyway, so I might as well just do something else with my life. I personally have never liked the idea of a backup plan because I knew if I gave myself too much of a way out, I probably wouldn't do the hard work of being a performing artist who makes a living at it. On the other hand, you are a fool if you don't have some kind of a side hustle to go with your theater profession. Because you remember my friend who's an extremely talented actress but cleans houses on the side? I have to admit, I don't like cleaning houses. I don't even like cleaning my own house. So, I have several side hustles when I can't be performing all the time. One is teaching drama classes. Teaching theater actually pays fairly good money. And it's a steady gig. Um, another side hustle that I have is I'm a good writer. So, a few times a month, I write articles. Or I write Sunday school lessons. I'm actually hooked up with a couple of curriculum publishers who, you know, handle Sunday school lessons, okay? And so, when I put all those things together, performing by itself does not make me a living. But when you pile that on with having a theater company that also offers educational theater classes, when you pile that on with the writing that I do on the side, when you, you pile all those side hustles together with the performing, which, you know, is what I, what I really love to do. It's why I got into the theater business. When you put all that together, then I end up with something like a living. I'm able to make my ends meet. Okay, so that's a little bit about me. That's a little bit about what it takes to maybe be a theater professional. Number one, don't do it. If there's something else you can do with your life, then please do. Number two, if you're bound and determined to try this, then do theater. Do it everywhere that you can find it, because the more experience you get, the better you're going to be. Number three, be an entrepreneur now. Start putting together your own work so that you learn what it takes to make good theater. Number four, decide why you're doing this, not just to get famous, have a more important reason than that behind why you want to work in the arts. And finally, number five, find a side hustle. Not a backup plan that you can do instead, but a side hustle that you can do alongside your theater passion. All right, that's my advice. I also invite you to come and check out our website for Drama by George. It's online at dramabygeorge.com. Go figure. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video and I sincerely wish you all the best as you consider a career in the performing arts.